Hello, welcome to uh, Saxophone Geek. Uh, today we're going to talk about read prep. Uh, there are two things you can do. You can read prep and you can break in reads. And I'm going to do a video about that as well. But this is separate from breaking in reads. This is the first thing you do to a read when you take it out of the box. I'm going to talk about what I do, other things that other people do. I don't really do a lot to a read, but I do have a, a set system that I try to adhere to uh, when I can. And we're going to talk about it. So stay tuned. All right, so read prep is just a little bit of finish work that you can do to a read um, before you soak it and play it for your break-in period. Um, we don't always get to break in our reeds. Sometimes we have to just play them. Um, but you always want to soak them in, in fresh water, lukewarm fresh water, um, before you play them. Even if it's at a gig and you're just putting the reed on the horn, you still want to hit it with some water if you can. You can't always, but you try. Um... These are some Van Doren 4 Javas for the tenor um, that I use right here, Lee. Brand new box of them, so we're going to pull a few. We've got a little insert that they no one reads, that no one reads, but they put them in there anyway. Good. Uh, I do like the individually wrapped ones. When they came out with them, everyone was like, what a waste, but they did make them better. Um, so we're going to pull a few of these and uh, do that. Some of the other things that we need is we need a good workspace. We need a piece of glass. Now, you can also use granite or some uh, good um, countertop type stone. Um, but what we want is something that's perfectly flat, smooth, and clean. You can buy this from a glass shop. Just tell them what you're looking for. Um, what you need is you don't want to use a piece of glass that came out of like a picture frame or a window. Because that's going to have sharp edges. But this has been ground down so it's handleable, so that it's safe to handle. It's about a quarter inch thick. Um, and I bought this from a guy who was selling some refacing materials. I don't reface mouthpieces. I couldn't really get into it. It's a lot of math, to be honest with you, more than I can handle. One, three, five, seven is about as high as I can count, right? Um, so nice piece of glass, and that's your work surface. The other thing you need is some paper. This is regular, cheap printer paper. This is not fancy paper. And this is what you want. What we're going to use this for is we're going to sort of sand the back of the reed on this sort of rough paper surface. And if you buy expensive fancy paper, it's going to be smooth and well made and it might not work quite as good. For this, what we're doing here, the best is to use cheap paper. Uh, I cut it into half so that it fits onto this thing. And I'll show you what we do next. So, I'm going to take my reed and I'm going to open it up, discard the plastic, I use these so I keep it, and now I'm going to take my reed and I'm going to take a piece of the paper, I'm going to put the paper down, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the reed, the back of the reed, down onto the, um, the paper here. I'm going to hold it with three fingers, four fingers, whatever I, whatever I can fit, just to put even pressure. Not too much pressure, because you want it to move like this. Now you want to hold the paper, and you just want to go in small circles. Maybe move around on the paper to get some of that fresh surface. And all we want to do here is smooth out the back of the reed. When the reeds are manufactured, sorry if the camera's wobbling, it is. Um, I was worried about that. There you go. All right, see that, how that bunched up? That's what you want to watch out for. You don't want to let that happen because you can damage the tip of the reed. All we're trying to do is to make the back of this smoother, and I can already feel a difference here. Um, when they're manufactured, they're buzzed flat, and then they're contoured and cut. And, you know, these companies, these are nice reeds, and there's some good reed companies out there. They're doing the best they can. Um, but you can get this quite a little bit smoother. And any kind of fuzz that's left over here, or what they call a burr, which is a little edge that's left up from cutting. Um, Van Doren in particular, they don't use ink. They burn this in, and that could also leave little high spots. So you just kind of want to take it and uh, run it this way, like that. And we'll do a few of these. This reed is already suspect because it's got some discoloration going up the middle. That's always a bad sign. Um, the next thing I like to do 
is I like to put the reed down on the glass and take the other side of the paper that wasn't used and just lightly go over the top side of it just to see if we can take a little, make it just a shade smoother. Um, this is not a process that's going to make a bad reed a good reed, but it can make reeds a little friendlier, especially when you're first playing them. Uh, and I like this process a bit. Stay tuned, we'll do a few more. All right, so that first read is done. I'm going to discard this paper because it's been used and we've used some of the roughness to smooth out our read a little bit. Um, so I'm going to discard that. I'm going to grab a new piece of paper here. Okay. And we're going to do another read. So we'll grab it. Discard the plastic here. Keep the dealy. And we're going to do the next read. This one looks a little better on that side. Um, not so great on that side. I swear, there are good Van Dorans. Don't, don't, I, don't, I know what you're thinking. But these other three are going to be amazing. So, hey, all right. Now, here's our deal. Again, we want to hold the paper so the paper doesn't move or bunch. And we just want to gently... Uh, little circles on the back of the reed here. Now, I don't think this is sanding. I think what we're technically doing here is lapping. That's the technical word for what this is. Um, smoothing out one surface on another smooth surface. This is giving us our baseline surface here. Um, I think we're lapping. So, don't quote me on that. But that's what I would say. Um, so, we're just going to go little circles. Now, you don't have to do this for very long. Uh, you're going to kind of feel a change in the way that the reed moves on the paper. Once it gets sort of rougher feeling and a little gritty, which is kind of where I'm getting right now, we know we're basically done. And we're going to pick our reed up, and we feel that it's, it's, really, it's really definitely smoother. It's a nice, nice transition for the reed. And uh, this is all the reed prep I really do. I bring it to the other side, and I just kind of rub around. Now I try to make sure that I'm in the center here so that I don't catch the end of the reed with the paper because the last thing we want to do is break a reed while we're trying to prep it for breaking. This is the hard, you know, switch it a little bit. It's, you know, just just makes the reed feel super slick and smooth. And this affects how it plays. That's why I do it. Um, there's all kinds of other things you can do to a reed to break it in. Um, there's also mythical stories I've heard of guys uh, uh, putting reeds in the freezer. You know, some people like to keep them in water all the time. I like to let them dry out. I don't like a super waterlogged reed. Um, here, this Van Dorn, we've got a little bit of a better shape here. But if we look at it through the light, it's not, it's not super ideal. But I swear, these other two are going to be great. You just wait. Uh, so we need a fresh piece of paper. I usually keep them and use them for writing, you know, notes or whatever. Um, and I'm just going to use my even pressure across the reed and just lap it a little bit here on the paper. Again, trying to be careful that the paper doesn't bunch up. If you use too much downward pressure, that's exactly what's going to happen, is the paper's going to bunch on you. And I do it all the time. I haven't really broken any reeds, but uh, you just got to be careful. Sometimes I'm not careful enough. So we're just going to do our thing here. Again, you're going to feel a change. Right about here, I'm starting to feel it's catching a little more on the paper. And you can feel it uh, that we've taken off whatever high is on, whatever rough, whatever is on here. And now we have a nice, smooth surface. So then, the side we haven't used, I just do a little of this. I picked up this trick from clarinet um, a mouthpiece refacer who does some work on reeds. He's doing a different thing where he's using a really fine emery cloth and going over the reed like this, like right over the tip and everything. I don't know. Um, I've never tried that. I'm terrified. I don't. I don't make enough money to keep buying reeds to experiment on with these practices. Um, 
So I have to try to make every read count, and that seems like an iffy situation. But this is enough read prep for me. Um, there, you can sand a read and stuff, but then you start to get into the break-in process. And uh, I don't do a lot of that. Um, uh, I'm going to do the next video will be about break-in, and it's real simple. It's easy, and uh, that's that. So this is read prep. Again, there are other things you can do before you put a read into the water or play it. This is what I do. Um, there are other products like the Read Geek and Read Rush, which is like a natural material that's kind of sandpapery that you can use to take material off. But you don't really start taking material off of a read until you've played it to see how it plays. So I don't consider those things read prep. That's a part of read break-in. Um, and modification, which I don't really do much of. We'll talk about that in the next video. So I hope this has been interesting uh, and informative for you, whatever they say. Um, let me know what you're doing. If you do anything to a read beside what I've shown here before it goes into the water, before you play it. Um, let me know if there's anything else you're doing. I'd be interested to hear. Like I said, this is what I found actually gets a result. Um, and it's, it's really... Almost all of what I do to reads, I just play them, to be honest with you. Um, that's my style. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. If you know any, anyone that might be interested in this sort of thing, uh, send them along, and maybe they'll subscribe as well and, and see the video. Good luck out there in the saxophone world, and uh, be good to each other. Peace.